Hey everybody, Andrew Lewis here, state representative in the 105th district, and here we are in the 105th in Lower Paxton Township uh, at the local 520 plumbers, pipe fitters, HVACR service technicians. Uh, and this week I'm highlighting one of my top priorities, which is workforce development. As we know, there are a lot of folks that are, are getting into the skilled trades. There are a lot of folks that are not, and, and there are some shortages in a lot of the different trades, workforce shortages that we're trying to fill. And one of the uh, places where that need is being filled is here at the local 520. So I wanted to talk to just tour the facility here today and highlight some of the great programs that are happening here. So Scott, you're the uh, business manager here. Tell us a little bit about the local 520, how big of a geographic region uh, you, you uh, operate in and some of the highlights of the programs here. Sure, Andrew. Uh, as you had said, I'm the business manager of Local 520. Sure. I'm also a trustee on the Joint Apprenticeship Training Committee. That committee oversees our apprenticeship program. I'd like to start off by thanking you Absolutely. Uh, to take the time out of your busy schedule to visit our center. Thanks for having me. It's uh, certainly an honor to have you here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Local 520 will be 105 years old this February. Uh, we've been at this facility for 50 years. And Local 520 represents members from the Maryland border up to the New York border. We represent, we have 23 counties in our territory and we have 1,600 members, oh, wow. active and retired members. Uh, I'm a proud graduate of our Local 520 apprenticeship program. Fantastic. I topped that, as we call it, uh, about 32 years ago. Okay, wow. It's a program that continues to thrive and exist and get better and better every day. Mm -hmm. uh, at times, I do believe our apprenticeship program is the best kept secret going. Wow. Because of what we offer, and I wish more people knew about it, and through your help, that will happen. Absolutely. Uh, to my right is yeah. Gary Coordinator, sure. is Gary Schimmel, our coordinator. Yeah. Gary oversees the program on a day-to-day -day basis and his responsibility uh, for the entire apprenticeship itself. Okay. All right, Gary, uh, well, thank you, Scott. I appreciate that. Sure, I appreciate Mike, the words. Sure thing. Gary, I just want to hear from you. Tell us a little bit about the, uh, the apprenticeship programs here. And it's interesting, we're standing in front of a door that says success is a ladder. Okay. It says it cannot be climbed with your hands in your pockets. Yeah. So you, you guys are kind of a, a way for people who want to work for a living. Uh, work with their hands for a living to get into the workforce. So tell us a little bit about the apprenticeship programs here. Yeah, with well, our apprenticeship program here, there are two different apprenticeships. There's a construction and a service apprenticeship. Uh, construction, both of them are five years long. They're state registered, PA state registered apprenticeships. And uh, our construction apprentices go to day school one day every other week, 11 months out of the year for five years. They take a day off work and come in here. They're working the entire time. Service apprentices are the same. They go to school two nights a week, nine months out of the year uh, for an entire five years. But they're working in the daytime and then coming here for night school. That's fantastic. And you guys both seem very passionate. Tell me a little bit, what, what makes you very excited to be running uh, these, these programs here? Seeing the next generation of, of people coming out and keeping this thing going. Like Scott, I went through the apprenticeship here myself in the mid 80s, I had absolutely no experience. I was a truck driver that came in here. I was completely trained, went up through, became an instructor here for 21 years. I was a part-time instructor and then became training coordinator in 2013. All of those things are possible because of the education I got here. I was a high school graduate. So all of that came about because of my work here. I teach in a national instructors training program in Michigan every year, uh, training instructors how to be more effective. And all of those opportunities came about because of the apprenticeship here in Local 520 and how I got started with it. That's fantastic. Very good. Well, I appreciate you both. And we're going to talk to some of your apprentices here. All right. We're, so, Matt, uh, tell me a little bit about what year are you in in your apprenticeship? Are you in construction or service? And then tell me a little bit about the program and some of the stuff you're learning. Okay. So, I am uh, primary in the service apprenticeship. I'm in my fourth year. Okay. And um, I take construction as, like, my secondary. So it's more optional and I, you know, and um, right now in service, we are learning about basic or electricity and like controls, mm -hmm. how to wire them up and what they do in a circuit and stuff. Uh, some other things that we learned are like start test and balance of a system and um, refrigeration and the process of that. And yep. 
some other things. Yeah, well tell me this, what got you into uh, going into a skilled trade? I know a lot of your, your colleagues and classmates probably went to college, uh, and I, I recognize also that there's a lot of folks who went to college that may, you, you may be making more out of the gate when you finish this than they will, you don't have the debt. Uh, not to say one or, or the other is better, but what made you go into the skilled trades? So, since middle school I kind of knew that yeah. Um, college wasn't really for me and I was more of a hands-on type of person. Yeah. Um, so I went to Dolphin County Botet mm -hmm. and started HVAC service classes there. Yep. So I did that at all of high school from ninth grade to 12th grade. And my teacher used to be a teacher out here and he told me about this program and I should look at getting into it. So I applied for the local and got in That's first year. That is awesome. Would you say that exposure in, in a Botech kind of gave you a, a, an advantage or a leg up, kind of positioned you well to come into this program? Definitely, yeah. I already had some feeling and kind of knew what to expect coming into it and that's, already knew some things. That's fantastic. Very good. All right, passing it over here. Hey, tell us a little bit about the pro your program and sure. what year you're in and kind of some of the things you're learning and what you like about the program. Right. Well, thank you very much for asking, Representative Lewis. Uh, I'm a fourth-year construction apprentice right now. Uh, some of the things we're focusing on this year as fourth years are welding and getting our plumbing certificates. So plumbing certificate is, a, you saw earlier on some folks out in the classroom studying away and going through the code book. A lot of codes you have to learn. A I lot can, of things can, you got to memorize. I can tell you that my parents are very happy to have a plumber in the family. For every leaky faucet there is, um, my wife is not so happy with uh, my <laughs> estimate of how long a project takes. Fair enough. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what's going on as a construction for the fourth years. Uh, we've gone through gas service, a uh, great uh, math education in his first years. Uh, I appreciated every step of the way of what they, everything they've offered us. I've tried my best to take advantage of in here. That's great. That what, awesome. what got you into uh, this line of work as a vocation, as a life career, and how did you get exposed to the local 520? Thanks for asking that, too. I, uh, this is my second career. My first career, uh, I have a college education from uh, Carlisle College called Dickinson College, a uh, bachelor's in English. And that did me what, very well. I got into social work after that, uh, youth counseling, had a good run of it. But at some point, my family started eating more, and I needed to figure out, started asking around, uh, what can I do to earn more money for my family? And uh, some po folks pointed me in this direction. and. Uh, they asked the question, of course, what do you like to do? I was always drawn toward working with my hands, working with kids, get out there, have them work with their hands. So this was a, uh, it really resonated with me. Let's get out there and put that skill to use. And these guys have taken me in with very little background, mechanical background, and turned me into a pipe fitter, plumber, and... Well, you look very much like a, I mean, you got the, the hat and everything else. I'm working so on the look. Very yeah, good. You got it. You're getting well, what, do you, what would you say, uh, so uh, for a long time, our culture has been very oriented to post-secondary education as kind of the only, pa the only pathway to success after college. It's been kind of a, a prevailing school of thought. And you, as somebody who went into uh, post-secondary education, would you say our culture is kind of shifting toward um, the, you know, the benefit of getting into skilled trades instead as an alternate uh, career path, as a lifelong career path? I like the term you use, lifelong career path. Yeah. Uh, I'd say it's a yes and. The post-secondary college education is not a bad thing, yeah. um, but it doesn't have to be a stop gap. It doesn't have to be the only thing you do. You can keep moving. Life, uh, you, if you have 40, 50 years in a career, why not shift it around a couple of times? The, our parents' generation of one career for the rest of your life may not be the only path. And right now there's a big need for welders and pipe fitters, plumbers, and people who can work with their hands. Uh, schools like this local 520 are willing to teach you and get you out there on the job sites. For sure. Well, thank you so much to both of you. I appreciate you taking the time to chat with me and tell me thank about the program. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So guys, uh, wrapping up here at the local 520, we appreciate uh, the apprentices. We appreciate uh, Scott and Gary and for the, for the great tour here. And we look forward to continuing to highlight uh, workforce development, which is a top priority for me in the 105th and throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Thanks so much.